All right, ladies and gents, normally we start off low elo and it's moving, okay? But I'll tell you why it's not. So I was just looking for games. I always look for the lowest possible games, and that includes team games these days, okay? I'm expanding my repertoire, and I'm looking for more content. And I found these two players. So we have Mr. Joe. Mr. Joe is 348 elo on the dot, has never played 1v1s. I think it is three wins and 40 losses in team games. Not the best, okay? And Mr. Joe was teamed with Oddshe. And I looked at Oddshe's account, and I was like, wait a second. Three wins and 40 losses in team games. 348 ELO. These two players here have only played online ranked games together. No 1v1s. No team games apart from each other. Beautiful story. They are struggling to get victories, so I'm excited for them. And then on this side, I saw these guys. I was like, okay, well, these guys are a bit higher. Averaging around 450 ELO. But it's a very similar story in that these guys have mainly played together. I looked over the last two weeks. The only time these two have been playing is playing together. And that's a beautiful thing. Now, it's mega random. We're going to start now. But the map generation is just like insane here. <laughs> They're super close together. So at this ELO, I mean, I think it's going to be a big old struggle for all these teams. So we have Le Crack here. And then we have Touche Pa, uh, who hasn't really gotten started. Okay, there we go. Are you going to kill the sheep out there? Sure, why not? And uh, so we have the French team, okay? And uh, over here, these players are German, according to their profiles. So again, I'm, I'm pumped to see what happens here. At this ELO, with everything being so close, anything can happen. And with respect to, you know, these, two, these four participants here, as I'm pumped to be able to cast them, I'm experienced enough to know that if you're 340 or 450 team game ELO, and you don't play a lot of 1v1s, your 1v1 elo would probably be potentially even below this or, or around where it's at right now. Quite low compared to what we cast a lot in 1v1s. Now, they might be on Discord or TeamSpeak or whatever. I don't know. Skype, what are people using these days? Probably Discord, right? Um, and so I don't know if like they're communicating there. I would love for these teams to communicate in chat, but I guess if they were to, they would probably be in their native language anyways, right? So... A blue starting off with four houses and then a mill. There's lots of food on this map, I'm noticing. Um, red has not located the enemy yet, but located some extra goats. Blue, you can tell, did the scouting circle, right? So did the scouting circle, and in doing so, scouted that the enemy is here. I mean, at least scouted the house. Let's see yellow. That's the normal scouting pattern for a noob. It's going to be like a little circle. And yeah, you see, I mean, okay, it's a, it's a normal scout, scouting pattern in general. It's not for dupes, but yeah, here we go now. So I'm noticing something that could be a problem for yellow. Yellow doesn't like to build houses. And so I think yellow is going to get pop locked at some point here. The red did a slightly better job with that. Okay. Green kind of having the same issue here uh, and forgot to make the house and now is going to rush it down. Um, so, you know, a map that I think we would normally see a lot of aggression on, and, I mean, they're right next to each other. At the same time, though, it's kind of hard for lower ELO players to go for some of the aggression, I think, that would work on this map. Like, for example, Man at Arms. I feel like low ELO players with the berries being so close to the CC would just run into the TC fire. I may have lost my sense of smell because of COVID, but YouTube still smells. Oh my God, WDW kid. <laughs> okay, so yellow, you need to make houses. So yellow has four villagers in queue. The great thing about being Lithuanians is you start with all that extra food. And uh, I'm not entirely sure what yellow's doing right now. Here comes both enemy scouts. That's actually auto scout. Okay, now the house is going. Okay, that's the enemy. Okay, the enemy's now left. Okay, the enemy's now attacking. Yellow, please garrison. Is this why people ring the bell? Okay. Yellow doesn't want to ring or garrison or anything. Oh, now green's over here too. Holy crap! <laughs> hey, no fair. This is a 2v1. So yellow's so new, I guess. Yellow doesn't know that you can garrison your town center. And this has obviously led to some stress here for yellow. But the other two are now confident because they've realized that yellow isn't garrisoning the town center. And now, oh, no, don't fight with the Vils. Oh, don't fight with the Vils, yellow. Garrison. 
Oh, I'm actually feeling really bad. The funny thing is, yellow's gonna win the fight like a beast. Watch this. Blue's gonna lose the scout. Green's Green will lose the scout if green stays here as well. Yeah, you, you cannot fight. If the villagers are loomed, you cannot be taking a 1v1 fight. So I guess we'll compliment yellow on that. My, guys, I would guess that red heard about this. Because red's now over here. Also, that farm for red is just like, hey, enemies over here? Yeah, come kill me. Very bold farmer. These players have gone for the classic goat swap. I guess red never realized the goats were there and neither did green. Bringing in the rhinos. This is not an elo where players are going to do any luring of any kind. Um, yellow. Oh, I, I take it back. Sorry, yellow. Was able to take in the rhino now. Not bad. Bruno says, hi, T90. Watch you on YouTube all the time. First time watching live. Welcome. Uh, welcome to the land of straggler tree shopping. As Lecrack says, get these things out of my face. Now, we actually... Uh, funny side note. I actually did cast Lecrack and Touche Paw last week. And it was a 2v2. They lost horribly, if I recall. Um, but I remember Portuguese was involved. It was Portuguese and Turks for those that... Wait, no. Oh, no. I think they died to Portuguese. Excuse me. I'm trying to remember now. It was it was Turks. And I forget. I think Turks to Tars. Okay, so I was, I was incorrect. I just remembered Portuguese in that game, but it actually wasn't them. But having Portuguese is nice because you have the free cartography. Look at Green Scout. Green Scout is so scared of the world right now. Yeah, actually, very good observation here uh, from chat. We actually have one relic, and it's in the middle of the map. It almost looks like a Capture the Relic map. A red. You know, again, the theme for, for him and for yellow has been the lack of houses. Look, every time they get housed and they hear that noise, they then build a house instead of thinking ahead. Yellow Scout also... Excuse me, I'm very burpy right now. A yellow scout just scared underneath the TC. Red, though, great scouting. Red has actually had the best scouting, I think, because red has located wood on the outer ring and is taking it now. And that's going to be really helpful. You look at green, if there's any type of aggression, it's all in the same area. And now green scout is just on top of the hill. I like how much attention is, is put into the scout, but also at the same time how little attention is put into the scout, you know? <laughs> Now, this is interesting. So, the crack here uh, is going for man-at-arms. And this is this is a semi-decent build, too. I mean, the food and the gold is there to get man-at-arms. And if yellow... Oh, no. Yellow doesn't know you can garrison inside town centers. If that's the case, yellow's going to have some big problems. By the way, yellow has a 1,000 food right now. But doesn't actually have the second building to be able to go up. You would need to have two... Oh, Blue's... Okay, Blue's now made in more militia. Well, now Blue can't afford man-at-arms. Blue probably doesn't know how much that costs, but... I guess five militia is still something. Yeah, Blue seems like the best player right now. Blue is the highest vil count. Green is also following him to the uh, feudal age. And guys, the concern with low elo... And I, I've talked about this a lot, because I have a lot of people say, Hey, T90, why don't you do team games? The concern is a lot of team games are like this, where you have one player who's better than the others, and then it just kind of snowballs from there. So I'm, I'm, my fingers are crossed here that Yellow can recover, and Yellow's like, well, I think I should make those too. So Yellow makes a barracks and queues up three militia, and that is all that Yellow can afford. Meanwhile, Blue is just attacking houses, which is kind of funny, actually. And it's not, I mean, the silliest thing ever. The villagers are going to fight back, though. They're like, hey, we paid good money for those houses, all right? And yellow with the micro. I think every villager is attacking militia. And the militia can't run away. The militia can't run away. Holy crap. I'm a, I am team Mr. Joe right now. Team Mr. Joe is a villager micro god. Okay, never mind. One villager died. Another villager died. All right. Suddenly, this doesn't look too good. But still, repair that house. That's right. Don't let them take away your homes. Yeah. It's about sending a message, guys. It's about sending a message. All right. So, yellow, are you ever going to go feudal here? I'm very scared for you. Meanwhile, green has made it to the next stage. Again, they're very close together. So you think like, you know, some sense of urgency, but nah, not really. Oh, but wait, Odd She, is that how I say it? Odd She is making man at arms, which is actually the perfect play here because what blue is doing, and again, this is kind of the beauty of low elo too. It's like, 
yeah, one player can dominate the others, but at the same time, like, comebacks are always possible. And if these three men at arms make it over here, I think Red is just trying to protect his teammate. <laughs> How do you say I'm in trouble in German? Any of my German audience? Um. Anyways, that's probably being said right now. And so Red's just kind of waiting here, you know? Waiting until he hears more screaming from his teammate. Interestingly enough, Red, who is in control of his team's play right now, uh... Stopped making fields, but didn't take any elephants or rhinos. It's just farming around the mill. Plenty of wood. I like that. And okay, here come the man at arms. Now, now blue rang the bell, ring a ling, ding, ding, ding. And blue is thinking, I need to defend somehow. And you know, the order of things just doesn't exactly make sense here at low emo because blue had five militia. And had those five militia in the feudal age and could have researched man at arms, but now is researching man at arms but has zero militia. So it's not perfect, but at the same time, blue still has the highest vill count. But guys, these players have just completely forgotten to create vills. It is just such a such a big thing you need to know, and we're just not seeing a lot of it. As blue is going to make more of these, blue just doesn't have enough on gold. Thankfully, as Portuguese gold units are cheaper. Yeah, I don't know. Is are, is red and yellow now just going to commit to attacking this barracks? Oh, wait a second. Okay, so yellow's going to kill this. Blue's also repairing the barracks. Good barracks, micro. And yellow says, well, I want to do that too. That's actually a really good idea. Thanks for giving me the idea. I'm going to make a tower. <laughs> also, what is green up to right now? <laughs> green. I mean, I love how... Well positioned these villagers are. Okay, mining camp. All right. I mean, the enemy is right here, Green. So you could you could say that maybe this mining camp's a little little crazy of you. And here comes Red now with an archer, and that archer finds the gold. So again, a reason to maybe take the safe gold. Red has the micro though, and micro isn't really that good at this elo. So <laughs> so the villagers actually win the fight. And they're like, hey, we're scared now. And okay, this is good from Green to realize that that's a scary thing. And okay, now Green's going to make a tower. By the way, no one is above 20 villagers, by the way. I think Blue's about to be. But yeah, this is a wild one. But again, if I were to give these players a 1v1 elo, if they played like 20 or 30 1v1s, granted, I think playing a lot of 1v1s helps you improve. I wouldn't give them much over like 400 or 500. At least based on what I'm seeing, I mean, the low elo legends we see on the ladder these days, they're, they're really solid. Like, the thing is, a lot of people, not trying to call anyone out, a lot of people will play a couple 1v1s and then kind of bail on the idea because they get a little scared of it. Um, or they just aren't enjoying it or it's too high pressure. And then the, the biggest low elo players are probably, the step below ranked 1v1 is probably ranked team games, right? And then, like, players like this. And then you have players who don't play any type of ranked. So lobby browser games, AI games, things of that nature. But I, I love it. I love it. And it's actually a really good game here. Now, this is going to be an issue here for Joe. But look at Joe. Joe's making skirms. Now, maybe Joe's making skirms because Joe's like me. And when I first started playing the game, I actually thought a skirmisher would do more damage than an archer because I just kind of did it in my mind and said, well, wait a second. What would I rather get hit with? An arrow or a javelin? And the answer was definitely arrow. I mean, I, I feel like I could survive an arrow more than I could survive a giant javelin. And uh, turns out, actually, that the skirmishers are only good against archer units. And that's the, the game doesn't quite make sense like it did in my mind. Yellow actually has the resources to go castle each year. And uh, yellow is mining stone, so is blue. Supplies for blue. And that actually makes sense for blue because blue's going to make more men at arms here. Uh, red, I think, seems a little scared of that tower. Now, what you could do if you're red is you could go anywhere else, right? You could go to blue's base. You could go elsewhere to green's economy. You, you don't need to sit and wait, but, you know, red's a little scared of life right now. It needs more skirmishers, I guess. 
Yellow still not realizing that you can garrison a town center is still pretty crazy to me after what has it been? 40 some games? After that many games, clearly, I mean, I would have misclicked it by now. I think if anyone were to just make scouts right now, that would be the key. And I'm seeing double stables for blue, but I don't know if blue exactly is going to do that. Blue, though, has just been a better overall player. 28 villagers, which is much higher than what anyone else has. And I think it comes down to who is best off between red and blue right now. Moonwalking skirmish like can't touch this. Da, 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 can't touch this. <laughs> Can we rewatch that real quick? That was a really long moonwalk. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, it started all the way back here. <laughs> He's about to die and he just suddenly gets filled with confidence. Da, 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 can't touch this. <laughs> It looks insane. Anyways, all right. Well, well played. <laughs> you gotta love Age of Empires, man. <laughs> it's one of those things. It's not a bug. It's a feature, right? Yellow continues to repair here. And I guess red and yellow are now going to arrive with their skirms. But maybe this is why low eagle players think that man at arms are so freaking strong, man. Like, you just can't kill these things with skirmishers. The javelins just don't kill them. Scout's also really good against skirms. But I guess this scout is going to die to the tower more than anything. And then these are going to be, I don't know. It's messy right now. It's messy. The, the one player that should be dominant in this position, though, would be the goth player. Because the goth player isn't taking any damage whatsoever. So that's what should be happening here. I'm actually really curious if Red knows about garrisoning the town center. Because if they have played 43 games and they've only played together... I'm going to assume red doesn't know that's a thing either here. Yellow skirmisher still hiding over there. If skirmishers... Do oh, wait! Oh my god, there's the bell. All right. So, I, guys, honestly, I believe red just told yellow you can do that. I believe that's a learning moment. Now, many people who watch might realize that, you know, it's ideal to just garrison the villagers manually instead of ringing the bell and have everything go idle. But I guess when you only have 17 villagers, it's not that big a deal. Blue is like... Hey, life is scary out there, and I am going to defend myself. This is the tiniest little arena ever. This is so compact, but all I'm thinking about is Castle Age, and will we get there for any player in this game? Green is still scared. Remember that one attack came in near the tower? Both red and green are so... They're giving so much respect to each other here. But if red were to move anywhere away from the tower, things would be fine. And look at this. Red, okay, moves in, sees infantry. This is good for archers. Not sure why we're still seeing more skirms, except for the fact they're probably just unaware of how it works. But yeah, I think red told yellow, click that button, ring the bell. Red is on the way to Castle Age. Red is on the way to Castle Age. Okay. Okay. Now, blue is just doing so good. Yellow is just frozen, man. Yellow is terrified. Yellow actually has had the resources to go Castle Age forever, but doesn't have the resources for the second building. A second building could be a blacksmith. It could be a stable. Now, yellow is also trying to wall, but you can't actually wall on the rock terrain. That's part of why the walls look so funny here. Yellow actually lost his villager walling, by the way. Uh, blue adding a scout and a man-at-arm. Red moving forward here. And red staying out of the tower range. Okay, so I wonder what the communication is going to be like for the Frenchman here. Because it's very clear to me the German team, they communicated and red went over to save yellow. And I like that aspect. But on this side, I mean, at this point, I would be really worried if I were green. Again, we're, this is at a point where I don't think they really tr understand counters or how units work at all. And it's showing here. Spearmen and man-at-arms against archers, not very good. Obviously, uh, you're going to get a kill or two, but now red can dominate. Let's see how confident red is to push forward. Red very tunnel-visioned right now. Red really needs to leave. And okay, now green's fighting with villagers as well. What's going on in this game? Okay, there's the town bell. All right, so now red should realize, oh no, my villagers are get or my units are getting attacked. Blue's dominating, though. Blue is absolutely dominating. Blue, uh, 
has scouts and has man-at-arms. If blue could make knights right now, it would be amazing, but blue actually cannot afford to do that. The blues only got... These are few late units, however, they do have armor and attack. So this should be enough, but red is Koreans. So if red were to hop inside this tower, the tower would actually do a lot of damage here. Also, Koreans do get the armor upgrades for free. During this fight, blue decides to get arson. Which is actually helpful here. It means you destroy buildings faster with infantry. And look at blue. Again, if these were knights, I think it would honestly be close to GG. The scouts have already done enough. Huh. Crazy game. Meanwhile, yellow is trying to play defense. And yellow now doesn't have the food to go up, which is so sad. Yellow had it for so long, but now has been making vills again. Obviously, making vills is pretty is, is a good thing. It's not a bad thing, but just the balance has been a little rough. Okay, blue, I mean, you're, you're getting chain barding armor, which is an amazing armor upgrade, but you've made a scout now. So there's an issue here for blue. Blue doesn't actually have a market, guys, so can't sell some of the extra resources. But no, it's green who has to do that. I mean, the, the resources are there for knights, and Portuguese don't even spend as much gold on it. Now, on the other side of things, I think we're going to see a castle here for red. Like, red is getting really close to that. And I, I'd i be lying if I didn't say, if I wasn't honest with you guys, and just say that I'm actually rooting for Ajti's team because they only have three wins ever. Three wins and 40 losses. They only play together. They do not get many victories. I mean, it's not like Lecrac and Touche Pa do that well together either compared to you know, some higher elo players, but they're still getting, you know, 30-40% victories, I think, based on what I saw in their profile. We've got Thumb Ring now. Red doesn't really have the food to do much, but let's see. Red now has enough stone for a castle. Where will Red place it? I want Red to place it here. Yes! Yes! Let's go! Skirmishers, move your fat... Your fat asses. Fine, I'll say it. You're fat. Lose some weight, Skirms. Let's go. Actually, these are scrawny, guys. They're real scrawny. I'm jealous. Okay, so castle's on the way. No rush, by the way. We'll just place it with four villagers. I guess if you think about it, four villagers is like 25% or 20% of the whole economy Red has. So I guess the numbers work there. I find it so funny how yellow and blue still are having the tower war and how blue is now repairing this. Blue now decides, hey, knights are a thing. Knights would be a great idea. But maybe a little too late to stop this castle. And... If red just commits to wagons, this could be amazing. And also could just get Bodkinero because I getting the armor upgrade for free applies to the wagons too. Yeah, Blue's, Blue's Knights would have stopped this and the game would have been over, but the timing wasn't quite there. Yellow is not fully walled yet, by the way, and yellow still has not clicked up to the next stage. So yellow really needs some food. And this tower is going to get shot down. Green is in shock. And green unrings the bell and has to run away now. So your best skill right now, if you're yellow and if you're green, is just not dying. It is just doing your best to stay alive. And yeah, green, maybe not really displaying those skills as well here. Uh, probably stressed with other things. And just making army. Just doesn't know what to do exactly. Just making more army. Blue's going to drop a tower here. They are concerned about this position. And okay, here comes blue. Now, blue has bloodlines and chain barning armor. Almost fully upgraded Castle Age Knights, but castles, guys. Castles are a terrifying thing. A good move for blue would be to raid red because red isn't really defended at home. It looks like blue's actually going to do that now. And yellow's on the way to Castle Age. Okay, let's see what red's reaction looks like. Here's blue. Blue sees the enemy house. Earlier in the game, blue is attacking yellow's houses. Thought that was a good plan. Has now found another house. Okay, is now clicking the mill. I think blue has an accuracy problem. <laughs> I think blue is genuinely trying to click units and is accidentally clicking the buildings. That would be my guess here. By the way, red doesn't have loom. Which means the knights are melting villagers even faster. And blue is dropping a castle here. Honestly, what a, what a pro, man. What a team player. Both red and blue have been amazing team players. I'm just so excited because I think yellow now... 
who I guess wants to save stone for other things. Yellow could drop a castle somewhere. Also, Red, are you going to ring the bell? Or are you going to save your vills? Because they're dying really fast. And skirmishers just not cutting it. Red, please don't, please don't go castle into GG. The position is so good. Red, please save yourself. Red, hey, buddy. I guess Red's just kind of waiting for the spearman right now. And that's one of the first times we've actually seen someone understand counters a bit. Uh, spearmen are good choices against knights like this, but a uh, little too late there. Now the villagers are all dead. Okay, yellow has made this massive wall and also wants to make a castle to affect blue. So yellow says, all right, I'm going to I'm gonna make this castle. You guys finish the wall so they can't attack me. There's one villager building this castle. Now, I don't know what the communication's like right now between yellow and red. But clearly, red isn't telling yellow that this is a risky move. Because yellow... <laughs> Yellow's just dropping the castle here <laughs> like it's nothing. I'm kind of sad. I really wish the castle would have gone here. I mean, blue's one villager castle made sense because there's actually army here. This is not to say red doesn't have army, by the way. Red has now cleared up the raid. Do they realize this is happening right now? Oh my god, man. I love it. It's such a low elo game. I guess the less you commit to it, the less they'll notice it. Is that the logic? Just shh, be sneaky. And he's also planning to build a tower right next to it. Because one castle isn't enough. All right. Now, I think what's going to happen here is they hear the attack signal. Yep, yep, yep. So now they see it because they brought the military here. So had they not moved... Blue? <gasps> I was wrong! Blue wanted to raid! Blue wanted to raid! What is happening? Wait, now Blue notices, I think. There's a lot of spearmen out here. That's enough spearmen to deal with that. Also, green's in feudal. Green can do nothing about the castles. Also, blue has made an organ gun that just dies to the castle. I want this castle to go up so bad because I, I would. What an amazing story if we could actually catch one of the victories for Joe and Ashti after 43 games and only winning three of them. And they're up against players who are higher elo. I mean, you know, other players have also played some 1v1 games. I can't believe this is actually working. This castle is actually going to go up. And if, you know, these players might feel like there's not a lot of areas to really move to. Blue has played phenomenally well, but green is completely stressed. And the pikemen should, it'll be messy, but the pikemen should be able to defend this. Red only having 15 villagers. Red has just completely forgotten about that. Is there a way back in the mind of Le Crack and Touche Pa? Because if they, um... If they think there's a way back, they will fight. But at this elo, sometimes you just see early resigns if you think you've been bested. Oh my god! I think the game comes down to this. They're like, we have to control the hill. And how many villagers are going to build this castle? Is it going to be 5 or 10 because this is really risky? No, no. It's just one vill. The same vill that built the other one. And these scouts have been sent to protect this lady. And so there they go. Um, now I'm no expert on the game, but I think that this might be a little too risky. And I think that this will probably be denied. The castle there would have been epic, don't get me wrong. But now, I mean, again, we have to question a lot, what do these guys know? Does Blue know you have to delete that foundation? Hey, yellow. Okay, Blue deleted it. Blue is, Blue is the most experienced player here. Blue has created more villagers. Blue has researched more upgrades and made more variety of units. But credit to Red for, for applying a pressure to Green. And Green's kind of out of the game right now unless Green gets to Castle Age, which Green could do. And then credit to Yellow as well for actually doing something. Like, Yellow's contributing now. And we have Imp for Blue! What? Blue is Imping. Okay, so Blue could maybe do it. All on his own. Let's actually look at the resources collected. Okay, 24,000 resources collected. Almost as much as the other team combined, right? So, Blue has is, is done it all here. 
And with a castle, Blue could then make trebuchets. And I think... I'm not sure what red and yellow can really do against that. Because we have another castle over here eventually for Blue. The Blue could make more trebs. And what I think is going to happen, because I've seen it enough times at higher low elo, is red and yellow are going to panic when they see the trebs. And they're just going to click everything they have after the trebuchets. And then it's all going to die to the castle. And then they're probably going to lose the game. That would be my guess from what we're seeing right now. I, of course, could be wrong. We have another town center here for red. Do we build our town centers next to the resources we need to make it efficient? No, we build it here because it looks nice. <clears throat> town centers are the deadliest building in the game. Right after a castle, and red is on the move. Imagine if red would have done this a little bit earlier. Green. Weird, it says green is 15 vils. I don't actually see the other ones. Okay, here comes a latest from Joe. Should get some good kills here. Blue also doesn't have loom. I like how yellow's doing this. Uh, Imperial Age will still come in, though, for blue. And a couple towers here, and... Okay, now the TC fire. Ding, ding, ding. Uh, it's certainly going to help. And yellow sees that and runs away now. Okay, blue's resources. Blue actually doesn't have the gold to make trebs. It's concerning. And green can barely contribute. Green just made it to Castle Age, but I guess green is saving up for a castle now? Yellow thinks this position is really important. Red says, let's trade boom, my guy. All right. This is so cute, man. I love it. Hey, Yellow's really stepped it up, though. Mr. Joe. More like Mr. Yo, am I right? Holy. 29 vils. Still with more in queue. Raided with Latus a moment ago. Red is now going to make some wagons. And we have more town bell ringing. So more town bell ringing. These players have never watched my TC tip video. And seen what I've suggested there. I think this comes down to does Blue realize, as we have another TC, does Blue realize that you can use the market? Because Blue is just making light cap right now. Not necessarily bad with all the upgrades that he has. But if you can use the market, you can make trebs. If we're just getting light cap raids, that's something Blue could have done in Castle Age. And again, Red might have zero vills because Red has stopped making vills. And Red doesn't have military over here that can deal with Light Cav. Also, all of these guys died to the TC. These villagers now need a job. And man, what a ridiculous game. The trade can be raided as well, guys. Red is making more pikemen. Okay. So Red seems to be very reactive with the type of military that's needed. Red not so reactive with saving the economy. Um, so... Who knows? Now, here here comes Blue. Blue looking for a raid on Yellow. That's Blue's strategy. Just raid them to death. I think it can work well, but now we have Yellow making Spearmen. But Yellow also not very reactive with the eco. And so now it's 49 eco for LeCrax team versus 37 for the other team. And we have a castle here from Green. <gasps> okay, I think it goes up, but a lot of villagers do die here. Imagine if Bodkinair would have been in this entire time, though, for Red. It's funny how the villagers moved. The villagers didn't... Yeah, they weren't standing still. But a lot of the villagers actually survived that. Yellow is going to click the Pikeman upgrade as well, so recognizes they need to be upgraded. And we still don't have treps for Blue. Blue is making more stables, though. Making more vills. Yeah, Blue is just so much better. Blue... I I don't know if it's fair to say he's twice the player of the other players, but I think it's got to be close. Creating more villagers, making more military, getting more upgrades. These are big differences. But has a teammate who's very much struggling, so we'll see. And now Yellow's making a defensive castle. Kind of funny. Blue is just attacking the castle with Light Cav. There are two towers here for Yellow, or one tower that can hit. That will eventually go down if they don't send military, but you've got to think they will. Also, did green just lose? Wait a second. Hold on a second. I'm sorry, guys. What just happened to green's villagers?
Okay, so green, I, I have to go. Oh, boy. So I don't know how long this palisade wall has been here. But villagers, when you tell them to build something, they're in a build mentality. And they're going to finish building something. And then try and build more. So if you have something that's unbuilt, they're going to go to it. And for poor green, these villagers finish the castle. And I guess green forgot about it. I don't know. It's a very busy time out here. There's a lot of other things to focus on. And all the villas go right underneath Red's castle. So we saw it if you looked at the stats, but green actually goes down to three villas. So it's all on blue right now. <laughs> it's it's all on blue. Oh man, what was... Again, I, I, I'm trying to get into the mind of the player. That's an important thing for me. Just trying to figure out what green was looking at. Red's going to get woo-woo-wooed by a lion over here, so that thing dies. Blue's still trying to attack the castle. But, I mean, they have time to get pikemen over here. But I guess blue could always make more cav, too. I mean, again, blue can do this. Blue can actually do this. Blue's being a bit stubborn, though. Raiding is a great thing, though. I mean, blue's the only person that's really raided effectively in this game. But all the light cav will die. Now, what makes it even more crazy is there is not a world where red and where yellow make it to imp. It, they're just not... Their economies look so bad. I don't know where these vills are going now. Oh, oh, farms! Dang! I take it back. Farming eco. Okay. This castle was denied, by the way. Yellow needs to get the pikemen over here. Villagers just fight back. No, no, no. Town bell. Again, I believe we witnessed yellow learning that that was a thing in the previous... Uh, in the previous age. Okay. Now we have Trebs for blue. Ooh. Now, again, I, I said this like 10 minutes ago. What lower elo players will do in these situations, most likely, is they will go attack the Treb. And if that were to happen immediately, uh, directly underneath a castle, it would be a problem. Honestly, if blue could just get gold... I'm looking to see, does blue know about this gold? Yeah, blue does. If blue could just get gold and make a uh, longswordsman or gunpowder, anything like that. I mean, we already have the longswordsman. That would be a little bit better against the pikemen. But I actually, to give blue some credit here, I think blue says, how can I spend my resources? And actually, look, blue selling some stuff. Uh, and blue's thinking, well, the best way for me to spend these this food is to make light cap because it only costs food. So it shows some game knowledge there. Okay, so green has five villagers. We have a castle being completed here for yellow. Yellow also still creating more villagers. We have another castle for blue. And is now getting the stone mining upgrade for two villagers on stone. I don't know if it's necessarily worth it, especially when you don't have a mining camp. I think it would increase your efficiency tenfold if you just made a mining camp. <laughs> But hey, he probably just went to this and said, hey, I don't have upgrades, and clicked it. Blue's ready, making houses, making stables. This player is ready to go. Again, I do not expect Imp to be a possibility for red. Um, I do not expect that to be a possibility for yellow either. They just do not have as much food income, have not had as much food income in this game. Again, I'll check the total resources collected, and it's just been all the crack over here. The crack has been ahead in every single category, but is basically down a teammate right now. Green has just sent himself back to Dark Age and is taking goats again. Hmm. Oh boy, we have Imp Armor. I think Blue will do this. I think Blue will do this. With Imp Armor, that makes a really big impact. And with that much food, Blue should have tons of light cap. Also, Green made a petard. I don't know where it is. Oh, it's here. So he's he wants to help and make a rush, I guess. Meanwhile, red repairing the castle. Red kind of worried about this side. Yellow making a gate to keep things protected. Actually, really good thinking there. Blue obviously could break in. Yellow's probably going to go directly to the barracks and click pikemen would be my guess. And it'll take a while because the treb keeps missing, but this tower will go down for yellow. 
which will mean that blue can take the gold again. But you see red? Look what red does. Clicks the treb. See what I mean? And so when you're underneath castles and towers, you're just going to lose your army to it, most likely. Red might actually send his whole army there in a second. And I actually think his whole army could take that treb out. But it would get worse if blue were to actually make army. And now blue's starting to do that. Is this the Battle of Africa 3 semifinals? I understand you look at the quality here and you think it's on par with the quality of Battle of Africa 3, but believe it or not, this is actually a low elo game. As we have Elite Organ Gun! Blue, make up your mind! What are you going to make? Invested all these resources into stables and got the final cav armor just to just say, ah, you know what, I don't want those things. I'm going to spend all my excess food on organ guns, which is not bad, by the way. But now, what do your stables bring you? Because you don't have the food to make more light cav. I guess blue did just go for a raid and it failed, so blue's thinking that won't work. Okay, getting conscription as well, right? So we have one organ gun to protect the treb. It's going after the castle, though. This is crucial. Yellow making another castle. Can you imagine like, if red could have gone rams or any type of siege to push down these castles? It all would have been pushed down. Because blue has... Well, I mean, you never know. Blue could have sent light cap, of course. So it's tricky. This tells me, though, that yellow believes this castle will fall. The fact that yellow is building this castle. Yellow making Latus, though. I mean, there's just not a lot to protect it. If Latus were to go in, the Latus would snipe the trap. But I think late. Wait, 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 wait. Okay, these villagers seem to be heading to repair this. But there's not an opening for them. They're stuck. Okay, reds click the tower. Oh, there is an opening. Excuse me. Okay. Okay. He, the organ guns should beat the wagons. Especially because... It's possible the wagons will not go after the organs, but they are. Here come the Latis. It's actually the right play to click the organs, because now the Latis will have less to go up against. And will the Latis take out the Treb? Yellow misclicked. And unless it was intentional, maybe I'm not giving Yellow credit. Yellow going in for the organ guns, getting a few kills. But now the Treb's still going, so it, it makes me think it was a misclick. They're desperate now. Here comes red now with everything. This could actually be the game. Blue, if blue loses this treb, blue has no gold income right now. Blue could run out of gold. And red says, let's attack the town center. Not the wisest move I've ever seen in my life. But maybe it wasn't intentional from red. Here comes red. Yellow still keeping the castle up. Barely. It'll go down here. Ah! Oh, it stays up! Oh, this is huge! It'll go down now. Okay, it goes down now. But now the treb could go down. At what cost, though? My goodness, man. The TC, the tower. Uh, they've lost so much. Attack the treb. Uh. Yellow says, well, what I'm doing isn't working. So clearly I need to switch my plan. I've tried skirms, I've tried spearmen, I've tried latest. They must all suck. Let's go for Man-at-Arms now. Unbeknownst to Yellow, Man-at-Arms is probably the worst thing out of all the things I just mentioned you could try against organ guns. Red says, let's drop another freaking castle. It's had a lot of stone for a while. Makes sense. Still more stone to mine. But guys, blue, like, just the key thing here is blue is producing more vills, Right? Lose at 52 vils. It's just crazy compared to the other players here. I think blue has focused more on that. I'm actually very curious on the APM. So according to this grid... <laughs> Wait, what? Okay. This tells me we can never trust these statistics. How is green faster with eco-military APM when green has 4 military and 11 villagers? How does that how does that make any sense whatsoever? Green green's been a non-factor. <laughs> um hmm. That's a lot of organs. Again, the main thing would be that blue just can't take gold.
Um, looking, there's I just picked up on the fact there's not a lot of gold beyond the gold you start with in the middle. I guess blue could always take this gold. Blue could also sell some excess resources. Wait, I just realized, guys, red could go imp soon. Red has a lot of food. It's amazing what 12 farmers and not producing villagers can do for your food count. Blue knows about the market. Excuse me. Blue now selling stone for gold. Make more organ guns. Yeah, red needs to get Imperial Age. Blue now is going to make 36 pikemen, though. I'm just making a little bit of everything. But think about it. The amount of production buildings, the upgrades, the villagers. Here we go. Now red is selling food. Red, stop selling food. You're good. You need some of that food for upgrades in the next stage. Now go up to him. Red? Hey, Red. Why did you sell food? For gold, right? Why did you need gold? For crossbows and skirms? Probably not. Especially out of one range. When you've got two, I would not suggest it. How about we go up to the Imperial Age? Because that's what blue has right now. And blue is making a death ball of Imperial Age army. How about we go up to Imp here? Red. What's the best against organ guns? Organ guns are a bit tricky. Uh, one of the tips I would give you would be to use mobility against organ guns and try and raid them. Uh, because for anything that can form that type of a death ball, that's their weakness. But it, I, I would say that organ guns are tricky because you either need to just outmass them with cav before they have halbs, or you need to have a combination of units. But like any unique unit, getting ahead of them before they mass it is always going to be part of the key. And that was just something they weren't able to do over here against blue. But if I if I were to give you two suggestions, I'd say something like uh, Onager or, or like Arbalest Bomber Cannon would probably be pretty good. Or Arbalest Onager. Sometimes mixing in your own siege is the way to go. We're going to drop another castle. I like to think that's what the same villager that built the other one earlier. There's been one villager building most of these castles for blue. But it's not even a it's not even a how do you stop this because of the unit composition. It's a how do you stop this because blue is just a complete player. The light calf, the organ guns, the siege, the castle drops, the economy. Red on the way to the Imperial Age now. Look, this is so cute. Red clicks Imp and then Handcart and then Loom. <laughs> the classic Loom after Imp. Horse Collar now coming in for Green. Green, of course, I mean, has had to do a good job to come back. Green hasn't had much else to focus on, but Green is up to 20 Vils, which is now ahead of Yellow. And these low elo players definitely love to trickle trip, but going to be more than enough. Yellow is going to slowly lose everything here, and I just don't see what yellow really does to change the situation. You can tell it's going through yellow's mind, too. What do I make against this? Let's try archers now. It's a desperation to just click whatever you can. But latest were actually fine before. I think if you were to look back and question what yellow has made in this game, it would actually have just been the skirmishers in Feudal Age. Had those been archers, it could have been a different game. But uh, the end seems near. Now let's see what Red has planned. And, well, no, they decide to resign. Maybe they said, as Red was on the way to Imp, maybe Yellow's like, hey, can we leave? Can we resign? And Red's like, yeah, just wait till I'm Imp. I've seen that before. So he, he makes it to the Imperial Age just to make him feel a little bit better. But yeah. Great game, though. It was an entertaining one. I mean, I, I still think that that theme can hold true uh, at low elo, you know, and, and we saw it here how, you know, green got completely bested, but it was blue who was able to take on two others on his own. But it was still a very good game, and it was interesting. I mean, we had some crazy castle drops, clear signs that the players are still learning the game, even more so than what maybe we see in our 1v1s. Uh, you know, lack of maybe some eco upgrades here or there. Um, positioning, unit choices, just things that the players seemed a little unclear on. But the storyline is half the reason I wanted to join this because I think it's awesome.
Ashti and Mr. Mr. Yo, sorry, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Joe. These are two players that have only played together. I'll actually go and show you right now. So here's Ashti's profile, right? Actually, I should go back. Uh, Ashti's profile. It'll now be three wins and 42 losses. I don't think this is updated. Uh, but Ashti has played consistently and only with Mr. Joe. So again, their profiles both say they're from Germany. They both seem to be good friends. I assume as much anyways. Uh, and yeah, I mean, they both have the exact same statistics. And I think that's awesome. And I wonder if there's more of them. Like this player here. This player played with this player. Oh, no, no, never mind. But but like this is what you, you'd expect. Like maybe you play with different players from time to time, but not these two. Now, this is interesting. It says on Mega Random, Oshti actually played a 1v1. But I don't see it listed here. So I'm not sure about that. But again, lots of 2v2 team games between these two. That is their whole match history. And I hope that they will uh, be able to improve. I hope these players are able to learn a few things more. Because they were close to winning that one. And I just... It makes me a little sad to see that they've lost as many games as they have. Because they were so close there. But I am happy that they're still continuing to play at least. And yeah, these guys are more experienced. Like This is a 500... After 200 games played in 1v1s. This is a 531 ELO player, okay? So the five, just to give you an idea of how potentially low that was, a 500 ELO player completely smashed two other players, right? Touche Pa here, apparently 476, but I mean, two wins and 19 losses. This is a player who clearly stopped and said, you know what, let's just play team games with my buddy because I just, I'm not having the best of times. You look at these guys, they haven't played 1v1s yet. So I think if they don't improve and they do play more, they would probably be below 500 ELO, maybe around the 300s, which we may or may not see. I'll keep an eye on them. 